three. Hello everybody, how you doing? Uh, my name is Stanley and I am here with the Sleek Pastor. Welcome to what I call the 15 Minutes with Stan. Uh, welcome Sleek Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much Stan. It's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. Tell me something Sleek Pastor. Who yeah. is the Sleek Pastor? Well, the Sleek Pastor, well, my name is Nigel Martini. That's my government name. I'm a comedian, inspirational speaker and MC slash digital marketer and slash also electronic engineer. Um, and I'm also a proud child of God. So yeah, basically I think that's, that's, that's all there is to me. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, tell me, why do you do what you do? What, what, what inspires you to do what you do? Well, I think um, from, from a very early age, I've always had a love for, for media, for entertainment, and for just, you know, sharing ideas uh, uh, with people. So for, 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 for as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to do something with, to do with TV or radio, either it's music or performance and stuff like that. So really, uh, it's just passion. I'm just following, you know, what my heart tells me to do. Uh, so that's why, that's why I do what I do. And also, I think uh, partly because of my faith and my background, I feel like I have an obligation to make a positive contribution to society through the gifts that I have. So in a, in a certain way, I feel like what I do is in part a way to fulfill my purpose. So yeah, basically... That's that's why I'm in I'm into what I'm into. Okay, that's quite interesting. Yeah. You see, when I when I when I look at it very carefully, like when we check out your YouTube channel, yeah. <laughs> what we are going to see is that maybe the first things we see is comic. Yeah. <laughs> is yeah. comic. Yeah. And then later on, later on as we go in, we see inspirational stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um so I, I would like to wonder what is it that drives the comic and the inspiration. What is the thing that drives this thing? Well, I think I, I, I think basically the work that I do and uh, my YouTube channels and my Facebook and stuff is really just a representation of my my personality. Mm. That's that's who I am as a person. I'm somebody who really loves, you know, just joking around, making people laugh, um, sharing funny stories and uh, throwing all these crazy ideas around. But I'm also someone who strongly believes in encouragement and edification. I always believe that every time you have a conversation with someone, it should either entertain you or it should build you. It, it, it should either, you know, relieve you of any stress that you may be having or it should at least equip your mind to become a better person. So that's, that's why they, you will constantly see that um, mix of humor, uh, entertainment and also, you know, inspiration and and, and that kind of thing. So basically, my, my channels, my platforms, and my work are quite a very true reflection of who I am a, as an individual. So it's not really like something that I sit down and I calculate and I say, okay, uh, let me make a skit or let me try this because it's trending. But really, I'm, I'm just being me. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. See, I, when I look at the pastor character yeah. <laughs> and I look at the inspir the one who speaks inspiration, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, um, <laughs> there's like two different worlds right there. Yeah, yeah. You know, like when you look at the kind of outfit the pastor is yeah. wearing, <laughs> I like wonder, you know, what inspires this? Because when, when you do motivation, yeah. it's on another level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you do comic pastor, when you do like the pastor mm. part of it, mm. it's... Um, I mean, what, 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 what is it that puts that big gap between the two? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to, to really try and uh, uh, be able to pick out wh where the line is drawn. And, you know, some of these things, really, they happen spontaneously. Mm. As, as you are doing something, just mm. like when I started mm. um, doing comedy, mm. um, I think... The first four or five episodes, four or five skits that I did of my comedy, I didn't have that suit. Um, and then s somewhere along the way, what actually happened was there was a script we had written because when I started, we were doing what we called Comic Fridays. Mm -hmm. So every Friday there would be uh, a comedy video. So the script for that week, to me, was not really impressive. I'm the one who had come up with it, but I wasn't really satisfied. So I was like, ah, okay, so let me just, to try and make up for this kit, 
uh, the scripts that might not be so good. Let me try to find something else that's funny. So there was this friend of mine who was doing my filming at the time. We, we both go to the same church. So at one point we had had what we call an old school service at our youth group. So he had brought that suit. So I asked for it and I said, okay, let's use this in the script. So just to probably spice things up a bit because I really don't think this kid is going to be that funny. So that's how then, and, and, and it worked because people were like, oh my God, that suit, that suit. Everybody was talking about that suit. And it became like a trademark. So really some of these things, they just happen naturally. As you follow the path, as you go, that's when you see, oh, okay, at this point, I need to do this. And it, so most of it is not pre-calculated. Mm. It's not premeditated. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So tell me something. Yeah. What are some of the challenges that you have encountered in this whole in this whole thing? Have you encountered any challenges at all? Um, well, yeah, but um, I, I have. I um, especially when I was still at school. I think well, one of the challenges I had was trying to balance um, school and um, the what what my passion was or my passion is. You know. Because especially my final year, it was so demanding. You have a project to do and you have this to do and you only have 24 hours each day. But I didn't want um, either part of me to suffer, either my academics or my passion and my, what I believed was going to be my career. So balancing the time was a bit of a challenge um, at first. Uh, but um, mostly, yeah. So, you know, when I was past that, all the other things that I face here and there, I do not even count them as challenges. I think it's because when I look at the few difficulties that I have to overcome, and I also look at um, the love that I have for what I do, it's overwhelming. So it really, you know, just covers for all of that to a point where I actually just overlook and, and go. So it would seem like, and it would actually feel like, I, I don't really have any, you know, challenges. Challenges. Let's say. Yeah. So that simply makes my next question irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> just, just throw it. Just, just throw uh, it. Because yeah. the other question I was going to ask you is, because I, I really wanted to know the challenge you encountered. Anyway, yeah. you mentioned a challenge. Yeah. So the next thing was going to be like, um, how, okay. how did you overcome how the challenge? Yeah. You know, how did you overcome yeah, the challenge? I think um, for me, like I said, the most important thing has always been my passion, mm. how much I love, you know, what mm. I do. So at the end of the day, it's always going to be the reason. Mm. Um, you, 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 because I, I don't think there is any specific formula mm. for, you know, overcoming the things that we face in life. Mm. Uh, but of course, there are like general principles like perseverance, persistence and patience and hard work, commitment and focus and all of those things. Mm. But to really like um, tailor, design a solution for every single problem, sometimes you figure your way out as the things come. But the guiding or the driving force has to be your background and what's backing you up. And for me, it was just my desire. Like, you know, how much I love, how much I love, you know, making content and sharing it with people would always force me, even sometimes when my schedule seemed really tight, mm. would always force me to be at school from 8 to, to, to 3 or 4. And then between 3 and 5, I, 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 I put some guys together. Sometimes I would actually film, do my filming at school. I would improvise mm. and just say, guys, I have a script, a very short one. Can we meet here and, and film something? And then we would do it in like two hours. And I will do the editing myself and then I would post. So, but found, foundationally, what's, what has always helped me is my focus and my love for what I do. So I think always keeping that in mind, that you believe in what you're doing and you love what you're doing, is, is, is key to how you overcome. Whether, no matter what the, uh, the challenges may be, because they differ. For some people, it's rejection. For some people, it's criticism. For some people, it's a lack of finances or resources and stuff like that but when you really love and you're passionate about what you're doing um, those things become irrelevant so i overcame through sticking to what i believed and through you know sticking to what i love okay that's wonderful yeah well, that's wonderful you, you you're so profound in your responses <laughs> you know i mean <laughs> like they're really powerful i i think i'm going to take a clip from what you say it's really beautiful <laughs> right. um tell me something uh what did you learn Okay. Like from the challenges 
and you know you overcame the challenges yeah. but what did you learn from the challenges was it a learning ground was definitely. you know yeah definitely um i think one of the most important uh, things i learned is to take one one day at a time mm. one day at a time because every time you are setting out to do something that you believe in and you are setting out to do something you feel is important or is big you have this big great idea in your mind you know i'm gonna make content every day and i'm gonna have a hundred thousand views and i'm gonna travel to this country and and you want all of that to happen at once mm -hmm. you know yeah. because you feel like i'm talented the world should know me yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, like that yeah. but it doesn't happen like that yeah. sometimes it really takes you a very long time to mm -hmm. to, to, to like blow up so I taught, I, I, learn, I really learned to be patient, mm. to take one day at a time, to do what you can with what you have, where you are, and then just, you know, just follow the flow and just let things come. Not to try and, you know, over congest yourself with trying to really squeeze the whole process into one day mm. and then trying to become everything you believe you're destined to be in a single moment, mm. but just allowing each day to give you what it can and also you are on your part giving what you can to the day and waiting to see what what happens the next so i think that's that has been one of my biggest lessons to take every single day as it comes okay. just that patience yeah that is great is there a moment you can reflect on and yeah. you say oh that was a mistake <laughs> i shouldn't have done that <laughs> wow um well wow uh it's, it's really hard to 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 pick a moment like that mm. but um oh yeah 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 actually yeah there is mm. um but you know how we look at things from a faith perspective mm. every time you look back you mm. see that there, there is a reason why things happened, happened. the way it, they did and yeah. stuff like that and mm. you can always find positive reasons mm. as to why things happened that way mm. so sometimes when you look at it mm. you don't look at it in regret mm. or as a mistake mm. but there was a point when i decided to um to 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 start working professionally mm. Mm. right um soon after i finished school and mm. i was like oh, okay so let me go and work i was actually in a foreign country i was in dubai i was working there mm. but i was so unhappy mm. because you know I, I was just killing my my dream i was killing my passion i was killing my gifts and my talent so i i, I tried to force myself to be like, you know, no, I'm okay, I'm happy, mm. I'm still going to do it sometime in the future, this is time to, you know, put some money together and stuff like that. I was basically living a life. Mm. So when I look at it now, and, you know, I look at what's going on in my life and the doors that God has opened through my gifts mm. and the things that are happening in my career, when I look at it, mm. that was a wrong move mm. that I made. But yeah. also it was in that process that I learned uh, quite a lot of valuable lessons, which I'm actually applying even now when I'm following my own path. So, um, overly speaking, mm. it may not really have, have been like such a major mistake, yeah. but had I maybe persisted on that path mm. and stuck to it for the rest of my life, mm. that would have been such a big mistake. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I guess, like they say, all things work together for good. Amen. For those who love the Lord and are called unto his purposes. Beautiful. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Okay, that's really wonderful. Yeah. So tell me, of the work that you have done yeah. along your, pa your path of passion, yeah. what do you consider your best work? Wow. Um, well, not, okay. The, the, you know, there's, there's two sides to that question. Mm. They can be uh, sometimes um, my best work mm. or my favorite. Mm. So they, they, sometimes it, it may not necessarily be my best mm. In, term, in terms of maybe the creativity or, or even the reach and you know, how people received it and stuff like that. Mm. But it may be my favorite because of the thoughts and the emotions that are associated with that particular you know, work. Mm. But uh, for me, when it, comes to, um, when it comes to the comedy side, I think there's a skit that we did in 2000 and um, I think it was 18 when we were having elections. Mm. Yeah, so just, just some weeks before the elections, there's a video that we did just encouraging people to go out and vote. Uh, to, to, to me, it's, uh, it's probably my favorite. Okay. Yeah, it's probably my best. And uh, for the inspirational videos, I think my favorite is um, the one I did um, in Dombo Shaw. It was one of my first, I think it was my, it was my third inspirational video. 
when I really like started like doing them consistently, where I was talking about learning to appreciate yourself mm. and looking back at how much you have overcome to be where you are, being content and not looking at what the next person is doing and not measuring how successful you are based on how better you are doing than the person who's next to you. Mm. Um, it's a message that I really uh, strongly believe in and mm. something that I really stand for. Mm. So the reason why I love it is like I felt like in that video, I was really able to um, articulate it well. Sometimes you have great ideas, mm. you have great thoughts, but when it, when it comes to the moment of actually expressing it, mm. you feel that you didn't do justice to the idea you had. But in that particular case, I felt like I really let out everything that was in my heart and it, the, the video was received quite well. It opened so many doors and made so many connections. And yeah, so I think those, those are my two best videos. Yeah, you picked exactly one of the, like the inspirational one. Okay, yeah. I mean, I love that one. Thank you it so was much. Really, it was really beautiful. And you have actually responded to a question I was going to ask you next. <laughs> so I'm not going to ask you that question again. Okay. But, you know, just going back to that inspirational video, actually, when I listen to it, it reminds me of that scripture that's in, uh, should be Hebrews 13, verse 5, that okay. says, um, let your conversations be without covetousness. Okay, yeah. And yeah. it says, be content. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, then, and then afterwards it says, for God will never leave you, nor no, forsake, forsake you. Yeah, you know, exactly. like, I, I know other versions of, of the Bible would like to say, um, would like to say, do not be lovers of money, but that's not the that's not the concept. That's exactly. not the idea. Yeah. Yeah. When it says don't be covetousness, it's simply saying don't be looking at the person in front of you. Don't look at the person behind you. Exactly. Don't look at the person next to you. You know, yeah. just yeah. focus on, on God. You. On exactly. you know, as yeah. you focus as you focus on God, you then be able to walk into that place where God initially intended you to be. Exactly. Because and when you look at yeah. when you look at it very carefully, we have people that are depressed. Because mm. they look at someone and think that person is succeeding, that person is prospering. Exactly, but the yeah. sad thing is, the other person could also, also be looking at them, <laughs> and they're thinking that's that really person true. is succeeding, that person is prospering. Yeah. But um, you know, you are both depressed over each other because you are focusing <laughs> on the wrong thing. Exactly. You know, the oh, focus should be on really God. Really so true. I really love that. I really love that video. Thank you. Thank I mean, you that's so that's what it, that's what it ministered to me <laughs> as as yeah. I watched it. Yeah. You know. So wow, that's uh, that's a really really powerful video. It's. it's it's amazing yeah. because in as much as you may not have put it that way, yeah. but that's how it came yeah. out. Wow. <laughs> that's how yeah, it came out to me. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what I love also about mm. inspiration mm. because it means a lot of things mm. to a lot of different people mm. because I, sometimes I put out a video and... What would you like people to know you for? Oh, question. Mm. Well, I think I would really like to be remembered for, for, a man, for being a man who, first of all, who was passionate about knowing God and letting people know about God. Mm. That's all I'm about, mm. knowing God and making Him know um, just how much God loves us. Mm. I, would, I would like people to, 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 to know me for spreading love and mm. light. Mm. That's, that's what I would really like people to know me for, just spreading love and light, making life lighter. Because, you know, I know a lot of people, like you said, people are depressed, people are stressed, people are going through a lot of things mm -hmm. in this day and age. So I would like to be, to, to be known for being that one person who was there um, trying to make life lighter for, for everybody that he came, he came across. So I would like to be remembered for spreading love and light. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, uh, the slick pastor, Nigel. It was really wonderful having Nadja on the set and uh, sharing such profound wisdom and revelation. Uh, the story of his life is really, really amazing. And all the things that he shared with us, I'm sure they will revolutionize our lives and change our way of thinking and put us on course and become the people that God created us to be. Amen. Man. Thank you. Thank you.